Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about setting up a uh, always free or a free tier virtual machine on the Google Cloud platform. Um, you may have some familiarity with this uh, on the AWS free tier, so I will try to highlight some of the differences there. Um, but first and foremost, you are going to want to go to the HTTPS colon slash slash cloud dot Google dot com slash free site and, and go ahead and spend a few moments to, to read this. But um, one nice thing is if you get in early enough, Google is giving a $300 free credit for the first year to use with any Google Cloud Platform product. So you could actually create a much uh, larger VM than the one that we're going to create in here and use that $300 free credit for the first 12 months. But then, of course, afterwards, you have to pay for it. And I'll kind of give you an idea of how you can calculate the payments. But what I'm really interested in, which is also different than AWS, is the always free product. Now, of course, this is subject to change, but I'm going to trust that Google is going to uh, remain always free on this, or at least I hope so, because my AWS free tier expired after uh, 12 months, and then I had to pay something like $20 a month or something for that. Um, but Again, the always free um, would mean that you have a free, you know, kind of tiny or micro VM in this case uh, for perpetuity, which is great for me because I run an open LDAP server uh, on Linux and, and a couple other like web front ends for it, um, which I can get by with a very, very small server. And that way I don't have to use a server in my home. Um, but go ahead and go to this website and spend a few moments reading the FAQ and go down here and see what those always free products are. In this particular case for the VM, we're going to be using the Google Compute Engine. Um, when you hover over it, you can see you can get one micro instance per month uh, and up to 30 gigs of, of hard drive or virtual disk storage. If you hover over this, you can uh, read some of the additional details. One caveat is this has to be a US region um, um, you know, cloud store, and uh, it excludes Northern Virginia, DC area. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit. But in addition to the 30 gig uh, disk space, you can also have five gigs of snapshots. And I'll, I'll talk about that as well. Um, and you also get you know, one gig of network egress. So obviously, you wouldn't want to be hosting uh, large content. But for me, you know, open LDAP requests and, and trivial like web transactions can fit in the, in the one gig per month. So once you've gone to this website, you can click View My Console, um, and which may entice you to uh, create an account or it might signal sign on link you to your you know, standard Google Gmail account or anything like that. Um, you, know, you might have to create a project um, first or something like that, but you can go ahead and pretty easily do that. But what we're interested in to create the VM is to come down into the Compute Engine area. And you can see I've already pinned it, so it's at the top as well. Um, the Compute Engine and then go into VM Instances. Um, once there, you'll see that you have, uh, I already actually have one, but it's off right now because um, I'm going to create a new one for, for the sake of, of this video um, and I'll name it demo, but, uh, and we'll, we'll go through that. But I also have that $300 credit. So if I over provision here for a few you know, hours here while I work on these demo videos, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. But um, effectively, the, this is off, so I won't be billed for it, um, at least billed for the, the usage. But what we're going to want to do to create the VM is to, to uh, press the Create Instance button. And this is actually a pretty intuitive wizard. I've grown to like it more than AWS, which I've spent a lot of time with. Uh, but it does take some getting used to. So first, we're going to give the VM a name, which I'm going to call it Demo. And then we're going to select a zone. Now, it always selects US Central 1C for me. Uh, but I'm in Austin, Texas. So I presume maybe it's a Dallas data center. Maybe it's in Austin. Who knows? Um, but maybe it's GOIP. Uh, but you're going to want to make sure that you're using one of the US ones because those are the only ones um, eligible for the, the free tier. And then I'm not sure which of these Easts is likely the Northern Virginia one, but you might want to be cognizant of that if you're, you're launching an East one. Um, and you can actually see over here when you get into free tiers. So be mindful of that if you're selecting an East, East one. Um, again, unlike AWS free tier, there's really no like, very, very obvious give me free tier options. But it's actually fairly easy. If you go to machine type here, you can select going from one virtual CPU. And then you go up here to the micro. This is what's free, the F1 dash micro with 0.6 gigs of RAM. Once you click that, you'll notice that you get over here 428 per month estimated. But your first 720 hours of this month are free. And uh, since we're in um, uh, November, I'll do 720 hours. Um, or sorry, I'll do. <laughs> 30 hours, 30 days times 24 hours, and you'll see that that's 720 hours, so effectively making it free. Um, 
Now, if you go in here and you customize, you can see that by the minute I select more RAM, I'm now no longer in the free tier. I would have to pay 1.9 cents per uh, hour that this is on, which if it was on all the time, would be 14.20 per month. You can additionally select the CPU platform. You can do automatic, um, or you can select, um, you know, Skylake is newer than these other two, so probably performs a little bit better, or is a little bit more power efficient in the data center. So I'll go ahead and select that, but that's purely optional. Uh, GPUs are not used in the free tier, um, but you can see actually by me selecting Skylake, the price went up a little bit, but it's still part of the free tier. Under the boot disk, this is where you're gonna select your operating system. There's another difference between Google uh, Cloud Platform and AWS is that there is unfortunately no Windows free tier. Um, so it's great for those who want to uh, use Linux, but um, unfortunately you, you, can't, you can't bring in your own Windows VM or have a, a micro uh, Windows one. But I'm gonna use CentOS 7 for this VM and the subsequent Open LDAP uh, demo that I'm gonna uh, create, which I'll link in the uh, comments below. But basically you can select that and then down here you can specify the size of the hard drive. This is going to be the, the physical um, you know, provision size. So you could um, bloom this thing up to 30 and then you know you wouldn't go over your, your 30 gigs per, um, per month. And then there's some firewall uh, information here. This would allow inbound HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Um, so again, from the internet. So this is like an inbound firewall rule. Um, I'm gonna check those because I actually do plan to run a, a web server uh, on this solution. And it'll also put these rules in the firewall, which I'll show you uh, momentarily, uh, which will help you to sort of uh, understand how the firewall works. So I'll press create. And it's amazing how fast this creates. So you can see that this is spinning here. You can get, uh, you know, your notifications here will show you all of your operations. Um, my VM that's off is gray. You'll see this one is green when it's done. And then you'll get an internal IP. And then once you start it, you'll get an external IP, um, just like that. So again, I've got my own internal subnet. Uh, and then I've got an external here. So this is actually already on. And um, I'll go ahead and show you to connect to it. Um, you can actually just press this SSH button, but if you go over here, you can connect via different things. You can use another SSH client, but you have to bring in the public cert and things like that. So I'm just going to use the browser SSH, um, which is going to create a pop-up here. Sorry, the pop-up's confused it a little bit here. This actually should be reversed, <laughs> but uh, you can come in here and see um, you know, what's going on. You can click on it and then get some real time here. And you can see that you're automatically logged in um, using your, you know, your ID account here. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is that, you know, is, is specify a password um, for your root user. And then that way you can, Oh, I'm just sorry, I got fingered that. And now you you know you have uh, you know a, a perfectly running Linux server. Now it's worth noting that uh, SSH uh, configurations, if you were to try and use that external IP address, um, are off. But you could edit your SSHD dot config file and then put password authentication um, on and, and things like that. And you can Google to figure that out. But easiest way to come in is just SSH in, uh, and it'll use uh, the the built in uh, you know public key cert that, that's in the system. Now, you may be asking now, okay, you've built some things up, you need to access things on, on specific ports. Um, so the best thing to do as far as the firewall rule is to just go in and you can type VPC network um, and actually click on VPC network to set up your virtual um, network or go into the firewall rules. And you'll see that I have some in here. So these are the um, rules that, that we kind of automatically selected. Um, you can see some other ones in here. Um, that, that you, you know, like allow SSH. I actually modified my SSH uh, config file so I can RDP in directly to my other one. But I've also added these other ones because I'm gonna do, you know, LDAP, LDAPS and start TLS connections. And then I've got a, a web server on one of mine that runs on TCP 8443. Um, and you can see that this targets up, applies to all um, versus this targets to anybody that's using the uh, HTTP-server tag. So I know that's a little bit 
confusing, but if I go back over here, you can see that um, under under this, you know, I can go ahead and edit this, you, you have the ability to um, uh, add tags in here. So apply to all means all your VMs will have these rules in it. And since I'm only running one, that's the easiest way to do it. But if you wanted to you create a tag and then, um, you know, instead of apply to all, you know, do maybe allow LDAP or, you know, LDAP dash server, or however you name it. So that's a little bit about how the firewall works. And that's instantaneous. So it works really, really well. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is snapshots. So at any point you can create a snapshot by pressing the create snapshot button and then specifying the source disk. So if I wanted a snapshot now of demo, I could do that with VSS or since duo is off, um, I can do it you know, without and then give it a description and then it'll create a snapshot. Um, restoring a snapshot is actually a little bit different. Like I've, I've kind of put snapshots in while I, I created various different things, but if I click on this snapshot, um, there is no real way that you can go back to the original VM instance like you would maybe in VMware and then go to a snapshot manager, at least I haven't found this, um, and then you know, kind of right click and then go back and pick your snapshot. Instead, what you do is you know, maybe power off your old one, uh, click the snapshots button, find the snapshot, and then you just create an instance, a new instance based off that snapshot, and you'll, you'll see that it sort of already kind of creates this, um, and then you, you, know, you can you can come in again and you, you have to be careful that you select the right configuration, but it basically just brings that snapshot in as a boot disk and then you're creating a new uh, VM, which would have a different SSH public key. So that's something that you'll, you'll see when you log in potentially. Um, but uh, that's really it. So um, otherwise, you know, powering on and off, which just gets a little bit better when you get a larger screen powering on and off is, you know, stop will shut down. Reset is a hard reset. Refresh just updates the website and then delete will actually delete the VM entirely, uh, which we won't want to do. Um, but that's really it. That's how you set up a, a free tier. Um, the last thing you can do is, is just verify after you've, you've done this in the billing area um, that, you know, you're, you know, you're not, sucking down some of your free credits. Um, you can see I'm, I'm down two pennies and this is probably from previous, previous tests, but uh, you kind of get an idea of where you're, you're stacking with that and you can actually set up budgets and alerts if you're using you know, multiple ones that accidentally power them on at the same, same time. Um, and that's really it. So I hope you found this video uh, informative. Thanks for watching.